Neil Sabet. I'm the director of the Center for Enterprise and Society here at ULab. Uh, today's talk, I'll be brief because I know we want to get going. Today's talk uh, is part of our uh, business and economics talk series that we've done on a, on a regular basis, brought in uh, some of Bangladesh's business leaders and academic leaders to speak about uh, important topics in business and industry here, here in Bangladesh. Uh, so the, I have a wonderful privilege and honor of introducing our guests here today, uh, somebody very well known to you. Uh, Ali Zakir is, is, is most famous, of course, for his uh, role in television and theater and entertainment. Uh, however, he is also the, the chairman of uh, Bangladesh's uh, most prominent uh, marketing and communications conglomerate, uh, owns a variety of different firms uh, dealing with everything from uh, marketing and communications advising to market research uh, to video and audio production and a variety of other things. Uh, uh, Asiatic Marketing Communications is uh, one of the leading marketing communications firms and, and uh, has as its clients most of Bangladesh's major uh, corporations. So uh, without further ado, I will uh, turn it over to Mr. Ali Zakir, if you could all please give him a, a warm uh, welcome. Good afternoon, and my profound apologies for this inevitable delay. Um, last week, I was in a situation like this where I had advised my hosts to invite resources, human resources, or specialists from the area that they are located in. I suppose we have got to start that exercise here as well. So next time Daniel wants somebody to speak, um, he should be looking some, for somebody from Dhanmundi or Lalmati uh, area, not from Banani or Gulshan. <clears throat> it, is, it is just a, it's impossible. I started at about quarter to 12 to reach here now. So uh, uh, anyways, let's get back to, uh, I would uh, correct Daniel when he says that he also does communication or advertising or whatever. Well, I, that is my job. That's my profession. That's the job that kept me fed so that I could go out uh, to the domain of arts and culture and dabble with it once in a while. Because there, there is no money for anybody to, be, you know, to, to sustain anybody. It's very, very difficult. A number of our guys went from here to various schools abroad, came back after learning how to do theater and how to uh, act in plays, etc. came back and landed up in uh, odd jobs. They, they didn't have a job uh, in that field. So therefore, I'm very lucky that I started this career much before I started my acting profession, acting passion. And I got into acting of nearly five years after I started on my profession. My today's presentation, as you can see, is marketing communications as we see it. We meaning the trade, as the trade sees it here in Bangladesh. Uh, I'll take you uh, through this uh, quite quickly because we are late. And I understand, understandably, you guys are hungry. It's in nearly lunch time, so you would be feeling very uncomfortable to be sitting here and listening to me. However, uh, we start off uh, with a little, little uh, uh, presentation on the history. Uh, we know that communication, advertising, publicity dates back to a very uh, old time when there were the signs on the walls, the town criers, the mark on the goods, and the entire, the whole endeavor was to get across uh, information about the product. Mm, at, in those days, brand was not yet established as a phenomenon, so the product. So all these uh, were used. 
And in modern world, the niche of communication in the total marketing mix can hardly be overemphasized. You guys are students of marketing, so you know how important it is, uh, the, the communication is, uh, for uh, any marketing endeavor to be successful. Now, what is communication? Now, there are various kinds of definitions that you will come across. Philip Kochler gives one com definition, and somebody else does another uh, definition. De Lozier in marketing communication gives one definition. So you would be knowing all those, and here is one, which says communication consists of all the activities involved in presenting to a group of non-personal, oral, or visual, openly sponsored mes message regarding a product, service, or idea. Uh, now, this is quite a long-winded sentence, and I hope you can read these slides. Can you? OK. So this is the uh, text uh, out of a textbook about the definition. What does the practitioner say? Practitioner like David Ogilvy, who is considered to be the father of modern advertising, he says, I do not regard communication as an art form, but as a medium of information. When I write an advertisement, I don't find it creative. I want you to find it so interesting that you buy the product. That's what David Ogilvy has said. Well, this can be challenged right at this moment. I will come to that during the last part of my presentation. And he further elaborated it by saying that when Askinus, a famous speaker, Greek speaker, spoke, everybody said how well he speaks. But when Demosthenes, who is known as a golden tongue orator, spoke, they said, let us march against Philip. That means that his speech resulted in action. Precisely that is what we are looking for. A speech, a writing, a sign, a message, that will result in a positive action. Some important considerations in the communication mix is reach, impact, motivation. These are the three things that we always bear in mind while writing out an ad or creating a message or creating a series of messages or creating communication per se. What does do, uh, do those evoke? They evoke stimulus, which starts a thinking process and reveal cause and effect, and then consider whether we are going to be convinced by the, the stimulus, where it, they address the motivation, search, sorry, search, which provides information about a product or service, choose strengthen we can uh, motivate her because if I find something which I need and this interests me is when I'll either choose on certain other grounds or not choose at all buy or do which is the last thing um, often uh, offer comp compromise solutions compromise with the offer, and then I go ahead and get the commodity. And then, of course, I have an experience of the commodity, which is most important. That will direct me towards the brand again, or product again, and again, and again. This is something that the manufacturer wants, a repeat buying. And in this whole process, the most important individual is the consumer. Therefore, it is essential to know the product and service offered and the target audience thoroughly, even before the product is manufactured. We must uh, have an image of the individual that we are going to address, or a group of individuals we are going to address, and then uh, have a thorough idea about him or her of, or them through a research. This is precisely where the process of communication begins. Communication often has to be supported by total communication effort. This is very important. These days, one communication is not, may not be enough. Now there are manufacturers, I'll come to that a little, excuse me, I'll just switch off my phone.
So, um, just one campaign in the television or in the press or in the radio or in the cinema may not be enough. We try to, in fact, address the, the consumer from various uh, angles, from various sites, uh, through various means, through various vehicles. So at, in this integration of communication mix, which we call total communication, comes advertising, events or activation, participatory research, PR and CSR, and below the line activities. Uh, I'm sure that in marketing you have already learned about below the line, BTL and ATL. Uh, so uh, all these are then capsuled and we call them 360 degree communication. So it's called total communication. Some relevant points for developing an effective communication program, uh, the planning process. Now you see, uh, it's not, in the previous days what you used to do is to get a brief from the client and go address the creative team and say that write out an ad. First, you write a one-liner about what you feel about the brand or the product, and then uh, let's see what we can do for various medias. I mean, that one-liner, how it can be elaborated for, the, for a film and for the newsprint, uh, newspapers, for this, for that, and the other. But now we start off with strategic planning, which is the most important activity given an agency's operation. In this strategic, strategic planning, we follow a planning tool, which is proprietary to my uh, affiliated, the agency that I am affiliated with, JWT, which used to be called J. Walter Thompson's before, and which goes like this, where are we now? Where are we meaning? Where is the product or brand now? Why are we here? Where do we want to go? How do we get there? Then, are we getting there? If we find that we are getting there, then we will again start the analysis by saying, where are we now? So it's a continuous process which takes us further, further, and further, ever widening the uh, group of consumers or target audience that we have uh, been trying to address. The key facts, marketing aims should be believable, achievable, understandable, and measurable. And each one of these words, I don't need to explain, that will only lengthen my presentation, which is not desirable at, the po po at this point in time. Each one of these, I suppose, is understood by you. Believable, achievable, understandable, and measurable. Communication objectives, what do we want our communication to achieve? Not too much. It has to be realistic, which addresses the believability part of it. Limited, focused. We cannot, there is a famous slogan which I was involved by the um, uh, 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 Johns Hopkins University and came as a poster to us at one point in time, about eight, 10 years, 20 years back, which said, focus demands sacrifice, which means if you really intend to focus one, on one quality, which you are sure is going to be the most applicable for the target audience that you are given, then focus on that. Don't say too many things about your product. Then it will get diluted. So focus is very important and viable, which is addressing the point of achievability, that if it's not viable, it cannot be achieved. Target group. Let us be specific. All adults will not do. Age, education, enlightenment, lifestyle, all these are necessary. So we have demographic, we have psychographic, we have ethnographic profiles these days for analyzing, for 
getting to understand each target audience that we are going to address. He must be a recognizable person, not a cardboard cutout. You see, we cannot take one individual and put it on everybody, slap it on everybody's face. Each individual has his, or a group of individual have their own mindset, have their own demographic profile, and also psychographic profile. Positioning. How we are viewed by our target audience now, how we want our target audience to view us after we have run our communication program. This is positioning. This is very important. Don't worry, I shall share this soft copy with uh, your university and you can access it anytime you want. And then ask me questions later. Consumer promise, the discriminator, the promise, brief and simple, the longer the promise, the more difficult it is to fulfill. Marry me and I will fill your nights with joy, your days with laughter, your bank account with gold, and your nursery with kids is over-promising. And be realistic, for heaven's sake. Over-promising kills the brand. It may result in customer disaffection. It can disappear create disappointment, it will create disbelief, often permanent negation and or cynicism for the offer made. So this is what over-promising does. Support. You can't make promises unless you have the support to back it. I can, I can say that, well, my toothpaste contains X, Y, Z, which is going to not create any cavity in my teeth unless it is scientifically proven, unless it has been time tested, I cannot promise it. Uh, un, un, unless the laboratory says it and user experiences uh, combine, I can't say, I can't promise this. It has to be. The support has to be there from the product or the brand for us to believe. Tone and manner. Warm and friendly will not do. What is the alternative? Cold and unfriendly? <laughs> be realistic. The exercise is to decide on a personality for the message. Even a message has a personality which should be complementary to the personality of the brand. The personality of the message must address the personality of the brand and they should be matched. <clears throat> and like people, these personalities must be definite and positive if they are to be memorable. The idea at the end of the day for the communication is to become memorable. People will not forget. Hey, can I, uh, let me interject here. There is often, uh, you find, let's say if you take our television, you'll find one advertisement to be very memorable, very interesting. Uh, it tells a story. It makes me laugh. But at the end of the day, I lose out on the brand. The brand connect is also essential. Memorability, not of the message, but of the brand is of foremost importance. You mustn't forget that. The most important factor probably is that the offer has to be outstanding because it should be able to achieve trial. Our first exercise when we create a communication is to see that it does generate trial. I have a very good let's say very good product in this particular bottle of water. But unless a person tries it and finds it to be good, it's not going to work. So that trial, and if the trial says it's okay, person feels it's okay, then he'll go for repeat purchase. Unless there is repeat purchase, the product or the brand is going to fail. The vehicle, we're coming now to media. 
No message is a, is a message unless it is carried by a medium, as you know. Message and medium are integral elements of the communication. Greater the integration, better the effect of communication. So you create a message, keeping in mind television, and then you put it on a uh, radio, it might not work. The message has to have total integration with the media that you are going to put it in. Of course, there will be a commonality, so that one doesn't feel that this is a different brand from the other. That common thread has to be there, but one must complement the other, irrespective of which media you are putting it. Mass and non-mass. There are, broadly speaking, two kinds of media. Mass media is objective. Uh, mass media, their objective and their characteristics. Growth, survival, and existence is dependent on technology, people's interest, and general development. You see, the moment I see the, say these words, you might already know we are, talk, we are talking about electronic media. We are talking about the press that uses super quality printing machines. We are talking about radios that have, that have good transmission, so on and so forth. So it is very technology dependent, mass media. And then the characteristics are very interesting. They are mostly one way, therefore less interactive. Relatively low involvement. I will explain these after I've read out the, these sentences. Audience segmentation, difficult. High unit cost. Broad reach. I'll explain one by one. Very, in very succinct, short sentences. It is one way. You see an ad in the television or hear, hear one in the radio. It's given to you. So you just listen to it. And it doesn't have any involvement because you are not involved. You are not interacting with the message. So it's low involvement. I mean, I can switch off the television. I can switch off the radio. I might just go away because it has no involvement. It doesn't have anything that will involve me. Audience segmentation is difficult because once you have released it in the television, it goes to all kinds of audiences. Let's say you are uh, uh, wanting to sell this pen to the upper middle class of the society. You release it and it goes from a slum to the richest household in Gulshan. So segmentation is impossible. You can't keep to your segmentation of the audience or, or, or the consumer. High unit cost. Each unit costs a hell of a lot of money, especially in television advertising. And it's a broad reach because it goes to everybody who owns a, owns a television set. It goes to everybody who listens to radio. goes to everybody who keeps newspapers at home. So it is not narrow niche reach. It's not focused reach. It is broad reach. But however, I will not come to a value judgment, but however, you have got to keep doing it because lest your target consumer sees it, hears it, and decides to take a look at your product. Non-mass media's objectives and characteristics created to meet specific needs. Characteristic can be participative, therefore more interactive than mass. Audience segmentation is possible. I segment the audience and say that I'll go to these people. I will address them through interpersonal communication. I will address them through focus group. I'll address them through events and activation. I will, this is where they are located. This is my consumer. I will address them straight away up front. So it is, in fact, very participative and interactive it can be. Audience segmentation is possible because I have already pre-segmented the audience. I have pre-segmented the areas where I'll go, where they are located. Relatively more expensive. Each 
let's say, exercise that we do, even if it's a Uthan Buitok for social communication, it is very expensive. So each unit is expensive. So if you have to have, let's say, 300,000 units, it's impossible. Anybody's budget will fail. Narrow, relatively more expensive, narrow, in-depth reach. The reach is unlike mass media, which is very broad. It's re this reach is narrow, but in-depth, and can be one-on-one. -on -one. Every individual is, is involved. Lot of consumer advertising have become very successful through interactive, below the line, uh, non-mass approach. I will tell you, I can give you hundreds of examples like that. People in this subcontinent, Indian subcontinent, have learned to switch over from laundry soap to detergent, basically because of, not because of advertising, but because of interaction where they are. Actually, I know about Hindustan Lever. They used to rent trucks, decor decorate it, go to each area where the target audience lived, used to find a place in a small little playing field in the middle of a colony and demonstrate how different detergent powder is from laundry soap. And this worked. And then warm was created, word of mouth. And that, that rolled, that took it far and wide. So I can tell you, that I know about this, this case study is with me. When detergent came, replacing, not replacing, in addition to laundry soap, people switched over to the detergent. And once they switched over, they found that it is far if more effective and in, in the long run less expensive than laundry soap. So they switched over. How do we select media? Through consideration of the audience segmentation, their location. This is, these are very simple. You must have learned about this is the ABC of communication. The task of communication, desired response, the communication program, and media objectives. These are the set of things that we uh, think of when selecting a particular media. All, each one of this, these is very important. What should be our media mix? Single media versus two or more different media? Many people ask that this is my product. Shall I choose one single media and put all my money in there? Or shall, shall I go for a variety of media? Now it depends, it cannot be very easily answered. Because if you go for proliferation of various media, then it's going to be expensive. It's going to be uh, really very, very expensive. I wish I had the money of taking all the media available at my command and put it everywhere. Flood the entire place, but that's not possible physically. So are we looking for synergy? I will put my main campaign in television for synergistic purposes. I'll also pick up some FM band radios which are popular. I'll pick up some newspapers to support that, etc., etc. How important it is the need for audience segmentation. If audience segmentation is very important, then we will see that what those segments are into, which media are they mostly exposed to, or they listen to, or they see, or they read. Is there any inadequacy of any medium in achieving the de desired reach? This is very simple. If any media is inadequate, you wouldn't pick it up to carry your message. Now, if I have to sell, uh, let's say, uh, uh, a candy which costs uh, four paisa, uh, I will not go to a mass media, I'll not go to a specialized media with that. I'll not go electronic. I will not, maybe I'll go electronic, I'll not go digital. I mean, so it, it has to be, the, the use has to be seen. The final exercise is intermedia versus in, intramedia. Where do I put it? Let's say I have chosen, um, just as an example, I'm not recommending any medium. Just as an example, I'm choosing Etienne Bangla for my uh, 
television advertising. Now I must select the intramedia stuff. Where do I put my ad? That depends upon the corresponding target. Now, does this target see every day's 10 o'clock news? If it does, that is the spot that I'm going to choose. So in intramedia selection, I'll choose that particular program as my, my uh, first choice. In newspapers, I does my newspaper ad merit a front page? Front page is very expensive, so if I have to choose an ordinary page, which ordinary page do I use? Well, it is meant for women, so let's target a women's page. It is meant for, uh, let us say, a convenience item of entertainment, put it on the entertainment page. So that's intermedia selection. If you want today's, both today's and tomorrow's buyer to notice you, be there where they look for information. So you have got to really, really do this exercise of knowing the consumer, the target audience. So that you, ha you, ha you have to be there where they look for the information. Develop a program that has a continuous appeal and not just a time bar defect. There has to be a continuity of the communication that you have just made. So that they retain some facts about the communication done the past year. And when this year's communication breaks, they'll know, well, oh, this is it. Now this is one step further. Social versus brand communication. Brand communication first. Objective is to make the consumer choose one particular brand over all others. There are two basic premises of branding. There is a unique sponsor. Let us say if we are considering close-up toothpaste, there is one unique sponsor, which is Unilever Bangladesh Limited. And the consumer has to make a choice. The consumer either makes a choice in favor of close-up or in favor of whichever other toothpaste is available. Meryl. So one sponsor, one choice. <coughs> so we are offering through this toothpaste one utility, one sponsor is equal to one message and one response. We are, one utility is that if you use close up, you'll have fresh breath. One sponsor is Unilever. One message is use close up, it will give you fresh breath. One response is come and grab close up. Social communication on the other hand, the objective is social co of social communication, unlike brand communication has the responsibility of changing lives, of determining destinies, and of creating a better future. Multiplicity, diversity, and disparity of message and sponsor are necessary. You cannot get one sponsor to say that your children must wash their hands with soap. Or they should brush their teeth in the morning and at night. It is the job of UNICEF of the world, the job of various other agencies. It can also be a commercial, a corporate, which takes over this responsibility and says that, well, this is good. It's a good habit. So it will form the part of their CSR activity. CSR is corporate social responsibility. Of course, you know it. So there are multiple sponsors. And diversity and disparity of messages, because same message cannot be said to everybody. You have to give it in a different manner, in different place, for different group of people. Multiple utilities, if you wash your hand, you will 
can avoid so many kinds of diseases. You will be hygien doing hygienic thing if you brush your teeth, it will stop your cavity, etc., etc. Multiple sponsors, various kinds of agencies will work, including corporates. Multiple messages, various kinds of messages for various kinds of people and multiple responses. Various kinds of people will respond in various manner. So it is a far wider thing, but far narrower approach. Far wider objective, far wider uh, sponsors, far narrower approach. The basic difference, branding is based on the premise that individuals make a choice. Brands exist to provide that choice. This is a very important slide, right? It's based on the premise that individuals make a choice. Brands exist to provide that choice. Social communication, on the other hand, deals with issues that challenge societal belief system. People don't choose belief system. Their rationality is limited by the scope of their belief system. For instance, those who use mud to clean their hand will not easily yield to the communication that soap is a better alternative. Because they are born in the belief system of using mud. The people who use charcoal to uh, clean their teeth would be very difficult to be converted into toothpaste. Similarly, the shampoo on the hair can hardly be converted into, could hardly be converted into, uh, uh, um, soap could be hardly be converted into shampoos. So this is, so the challenge is for social communication is to evolve new belief systems. This is a challenge. If you are a communicator, you create a new belief system and it's like a ohi. You start it off and it rolls. People start seeing reasons, logic, believing, then yielding to your approach. Social communication is to evolve new belief systems conducive to desired behavior. This is the way I want my consumers to behave. Create a belief system that washing with mud, washing your hands with mud, was yesterday's phenomenon. Today it is so. Brushing your teeth with charcoal was yesterday. Today you have toothpaste. So you create that, and you create that far better through interpersonal communication, through events and activation, through one-on-one -on -one communication. The purpose of the marketing communication program is to help create a cascade. The, the, the purpose of marketing communication program is to help create a customer of a product, service, or idea. This has been said, so. However, a point to ponder, should brand communication follow the path of social communication in our, in our country? Bear this in mind. Ask yourself this question, and <clears throat> next time I come here, or you interact with me, I'll give you the answer. Example, one-on-one -on -one instead of multimedia bias. Because we have seen that mass media communication often, often falls through. You are spending a hundred crore takas uh, today, as it stands, it's about 3,500 3, crore takas through mass communication. How much of it is really yielding fruit? How much of it has been able to develop a belief system? How much of it has been a waste? In the yesteryears, David Ogilvy, Sir David Ogilvy had said, people say that half of advertising is a waste. I wonder which half. <laughs> so you see, uh, it may be a waste. So uh, this is a point to ponder. You, we must think that how can we uh, make it foolproof. That said, I'll, this is uh, addressed to Daniel's need, the challenges. Just in brief, a few challenges that, which will cover where, the, my last slide also. Understanding of communication. It's so low amongst the advertisers that it is not funny. 
I have spent 43 years in this profession and I am still teaching my clients every day. I am teaching them to see the light. I have been, I've been instrumental in building brands, at least 11 of them in this country over the past 43 years. Still, I rack my head against the wall when they look at me without any expression. They do not see logic. This is, my, this is really a tragedy. It's a tragedy of my life. So understanding communication is a challenge. We have to make them understand communication. Actually, how to crack the communication. What I've said in the past is academic. Sorry, I'm inflict, inflicting Bengali in my presentation. Shoja bhashai bhushta hai bhai konta amar jhunno bhalo ki bhabe ami jabo. Bhushta ra jina kyo. Bhujate bhushta jan kharab hai jai. I remember when we first launched our market research company called MOD, MRC, Market Research Consultants of Bangladesh Limited. My client said, why do research? We all, we all know what is there. My daughter can tell which is the best toothpaste in the world. Why do we do research? I said, yes, how much have you kept for your advertising of this toothpaste? So my client said, well, I have kept 10 crore this, month, this year. I said, just give me 5 lakhs. He said, why? Out of that. Why? I'll have to cut back on my advertising. I said, if you give me that 5 lakhs, maybe I'll come up with something which will tell you that you can cut back on your advertising by 5 crores. All you need is five crore worth of advertising. You see, I taught them how to, I tried to teach them how, what research can deliver. And today it is a reality. Many, obviously the multinationals have given a lead, but it is a reality. They do regular and invariably, very importantly, methodical research before they launch a brand or relaunch a brand. So from understanding communication to limitation of idea, creativity and vehicle. You see, when a young man, I have seen, I have interacted, many of you guys will land up in my agency or many other agencies. <coughs> they come in and they are, they are, you know, they take to the water like a duck does, does you know, it takes to the water. Ah, well, here's this uh, television and here's this uh, model and here's this maker and here's this camera. Let's turn out a beautiful TV ad. Well, that I call lack, lacking of creativity. The most creative ad for the mass media might, might be the most non-creative. Because we do not, haven't thought about the audience. We haven't thought about the objective. We haven't even considered whether this is going to, this mass media is going to work for my, my audience. I haven't thought about it. So it's most non-creative. Creative will be when I am foolproof. That is the most creative way of thinking about a brand. And the vehicle, where do I put it? Now the, the moment you walk into my agency, you'll be told you by your seniors, don't be stupid. Put it in ATN Bangla and Channel I and whatever. You can't challenge. Why do I go there? Why can't we talk to them? Huh? Why can't I just pick up? Let's say I'm t selling sachets of toothpaste. I'm selling sachets of sunsil. Why can't I choose the Bangla cinema of Friday? Put in the Bangladesh television. Why not? Because that is the most audience. And they're involved audience. And in fact, if I can just punch in after the heroine in her characteristic manner comes and dances with open hair, which looks Rishmi Kamal Jalmole. I put in my message right then, cut it and put that message on my sun silk sachet. For Rishmi Kamal Jalmole Chul. So this is creative media selection as well. So you must be, this, these, are, these things are still lacking. We have come a long way. I must confess that we have come a long way. And I must confess in front of you and before you, that it's the younger generation marketers who are teaching our old clients how to really look at things, 
how, how to be objective, which is your credit. Because you're full of ideas, and people with ideas are needed. Oh, what happened? Resistance to innovation. This I've already talked about. You want to innovate? There'll be somebody to resist. I have seen one of our, our planning directors bubbling with ideas, making a presentation of how we can take a different look at this brand. And the first person who objected, even before the dumb client, is the dumb client service director that we have. One of the dumb client service He says, no, no, this is not a dumb thing. There is no such thing as a done thing. The done thing is what we are going to establish. We are going to discover and we are going to found. Right? That is what is going to be done tomorrow. So let's change the definition of the done thing. Let us do it anew, innovatively. Lack of ethical standards. <laughs> It's not only in advertising or communication, it's everywhere. There is no ethical standard. Just now, you know, when I was stuck in your campus B, my driver wanted to sort of take, the, take a turn and come through the wrong side. I said, no, you're not going to do it. I'm going to be five minutes late. You're not going to do that. So we came again. You know. So this is, this is the common thing, you know, in thing. And unless we turn around, your generation turns around and says, this is unethical, this is unlawful, then uh, nothing will improve, not even in communication. Uh, today, our, I will not say, but many of the vehicles of communication that we have will undercut the market, undercut their own rate card. And they will extend their polluted, corrupt hand to the client for whatever comes their way. And now I come to a point which you might not have thought by now. The process of globalization, the paradox in this. There is a very interesting book written by a gentleman called Kishore Mahbubani who teaches uh, public administration in the Lee Kuan Institute in Singapore, who has written a book called Can Asians Think? Can Asians Think? And it is liter uh, written on the context of global globalization. His thesis is that the process of globalization is on. Uh, take it or leave it. We are becoming smaller. The world is becoming smaller. The point is that in this process of globalization, we must not resist it. We must join it, and not only join it, give it leadership. We must lead. And if the Asians can start thinking, is when we'll start giving leadership to the entire world, which is very, very important. So that's the paradox is, Mm -hmm. This water is creating the problem. Sorry. Yeah. My personal take from experience, the lack of cultural sensitivity has to be addressed. When we say globalization, it invariably comes to countries like ours from the West comes through the vehicle of multinational companies. And they have set standards that tell us this is the way you should do it. And we, ex we accept, accept it because we are getting, a, it's a cushy job, we're getting a good salary, we're getting excellent perks, car, house, and what have you, why shouldn't we accept it? What happens to the brand is their headache. What happens to the country's economy is their headache. Forget about it. Let's make the most of it when the going is good. So the lack of cultural uh, sensitivity has to be addressed. It is very important. 
And what do I say? The element of insensitivity has happened because we have moved from international to multinational to regional. I'll come to this. But before that, what is cultural sensitivity? What is culture? Culture is not dance or song or theater or plays. Sociologically defined culture encompasses our life itself. Our food, our language, our clothing, our rituals, our religion, everything under, comes under culture. So that sensitivity has to be given thought to, has to be thought about by any marketer who wants to approach any market. So I have seen this phase of international to multinational to regional. There used to be an international, this used to be for the international clients, an international market. When Unilever used to be Lever Brothers in their beginning, in the 70s, they used to dictate sitting in the Unilever house in London that do this, do that, do this, and this will fetch you profit for my brands. And we used to do this, do that. Ultimately, they realized that, well, I cannot sit in London and tell a dark, short, ugly-looking Bengali what to do. So let's, what, let's give the Bangladesh office a independent stature. That is, let's make it Bangladesh limited, right? So they made it Bangladesh limited. Having made that, they said, now let us appoint clever, intelligent Bengali executives in the senior position to take decisions. So they started recruiting senior Bengali people to staff and put one of their multinational bosses to monitor what was going on. This was the multinational structure. What happened here is that these executives were conversant with the culture of the nation that they're working in, who know exactly how the consumers here behave or what they want, which way they want to go, why they be behave like this, what they want to see in the television, what they do in their personal life. All these are known to these Bengali executives. So they fed the chief executive officer who used to be a non-Bangladeshi with this knowledge. This was gleaned through research also. And this was made a regular thing as, you know, we had to go and present. So it was such a wonderful environment, such a wonderful environment to work in when internationals turned multi multinational. They used to listen to us. And all the big brands were built in that interim period between the early 80s and late 90s. All big brands in Bangladesh were built then. And then, again, something happened up there in wherever they're headquartered. They said that, well, you know, Bangladesh is a part of India. <laughs> so what is true of India must be true of Bangladesh. Uh, this campaign is time tested in India, so it should work in Bangladesh. They put, told us, we have now decided to shift from multinational approach to regional approach. So we've become region dependent. Where you see, get to see a lot of beautiful faces, mind you. You see, get to see Katrina Kaif. But I'm afraid this doesn't work. This does not necessarily work. This might work once in a while, but necessarily it doesn't work. Pepsi bombed here with the commercial of Shah Rukh Khan. And Zahid Hussain, our actor Zahid Hussain, rescued Pepsi Cola in that, at that point in time. I'm talking about 15 years back. So you see, this is what regionalization brings us. I must confess that any town in Bangladesh is not, even li not like any town in India. Not even like any town West Bengal. There is a big difference. I'll tell you one concrete, give you one concrete exam example. I have a client called Kellogg's. 
Kellogg's came here and arrived one fine morning. They sent me an email saying that we are arriving. We have very serious discussion with you. They arrive in my office and tell us we are going to launch Kellogg's cornflakes here. So I asked them the first question is how big is the market for cornflakes? Is cereal a done thing? Is it a, it, does it comprise the eating habit of normal Bengalis? How big a market you're looking for? They said, yes, yes, yes. In Calcutta, they have an English breakfast habit. In Calcutta, they eat uh, toast and butter, and we could easily get the cereal into Calcutta market. We are sure that Dhaka is only an extension of Calcutta. So if we launch conflicts here, they will immediately jump for it. I said, well, let's, it's your money and my effort. Let's try. So we tried, and it, it bombed. <laughs> Invariably, it bombed. Because our breakfast habit is more like Delhi than like Calcutta. We love our chapatis and bhaji. Shukru <laughs> Vardin So you see, this is it. Multinational can we be truly multinational? Our question, can we go back to being really multinational where the globalization process will be complete? We'll start understanding each other, standing where we stand head high. Understanding your culture as against my culture. Understanding your ethos as against my ethos. Understanding your psychology from where this campaign was made on the basis of my psychology with which I intend to develop a campaign. So a truly multinational approach is absolutely necessary right at this moment. I have written in this text here where each unit will work according to country specific ethos with a line to connect one country to the other around the globe. That's how we can create a united world. Not by regionalization or internationalization. At the end of the day, do we know each other better? You and us, you and me? Do we? Have I been able to make myself clear enough? Okay, if we do, thank you. Okay, I know, I know you guys have class to get to, so thank you very much for sticking around. I, I know it was very well worth the time. So uh, I'd like to ask uh, our head of academic affairs, Brian, uh, Professor Brian, to come up to present a, a small token of our appreciation uh, to Ali Zakhar uh, for coming today to speak. Uh, if we could all please give him a big round of applause for coming out. Thank you. 